Kelvin Thompson. She also explained to us how people did her in her apartment. Folks who spoke to her who don't speak to her right now and she don't understand. 
and she got some other issues where she feels people don't speak to her when she speaks to them. But there is, and I'm going to say this real quick, there is a loving person here today that should sit beside her and let her know she's loved. I don't know who you are, but there's somebody here. That's a healing in itself. There's a loving person in this church right now who can sit next to her and let her know she is loved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, now, Pastor. Amen. Come on now, Pastor. Pastor did. Terry had, Terry had asked me to pray for the, the entire congregation. Yes, it's, it's I, okay. yeah. Do you mind if I, I send that to Dr. Williams? Nope, I want you to do that. You want me to do that? He asked you to. Okay, want you. all right. Let us, uh, let us all bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come this morning thanking you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We come this morning thanking you, dear Lord, because only you know what we are going through. But Lord God, the, the amazing thing with the, with the congregation this morning, each and every one was able to say just how great you are. So Lord God, we, we thank you for covering us. We thank you for protecting us. We pray for the, the young mother and the young son who needs you right now, Lord God, to, to get a little understanding and, and get direction and guidance that only you can give, Lord God. So, Lord God, as we pray for each and every one here, as we pray for those and the testimonies that they gave, that they continue to believe in their hearts that you are God and you are God all by yourself and your healing power, Lord God, your healing power can heal us all. Lord God, for these and all other blessings we ask and we pray in Jesus' matchless name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures. Here we go. Please stand. Acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength 
and my Redeemer. We'll sing. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sings praise. He lives. He lives. It's in the bulletin.
hearts this morning. Just give God the glory. Just go ahead and bless God in the house. Just as you know, God has been good because he lives within your heart.
are here to praise him this morning. We are here to worship him this morning. Our scripture this morning is found in the gospel according to St. Luke. And if you would please stand as Jesus stood in place for us as we profess the good news. Coming from the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 24, verses, I'll be reading verses 22, 13 through 23. That's verses 13 through 23. Now on that same day, two of them were going to the village called the Hicks, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing, recognizing him. And they said to him, to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still and looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? And he asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was the prophet of might and deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hope that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels that said he was alive from all that dwells below the skies.
if you have given through the mail, we thank you. If you've already given us through Givelify, we thank you. If you want to give now through Givelify, if you're here in the sanctuary and you open up your Givelify app and hit the search uh, hourglass, Greater Bethel will be the first to come up. If you um, are at home and you want to do the same, if you just look for Greater Bethel Cleveland, we were, we're right there. Again, I want to thank you for your giving. And if you haven't had an opportunity to give, this is your time of worship that we will do. We are giving. And the offering basket is over here to the side. We're asking that you use the side aisle and come and give. And then uh, as Reverend Hunter gives us some marching music, we're going to take our time for this worship. Because this is the part of the worship that everybody Children's Corner, and the kids today are with their parents and, and their family pods, and so we just bless the family. I want to um, just ask the question of everybody. You know, in the summer, we're coming in the spring, and I wish it would be here sooner than it wants to come. It doesn't want to clock in yet. It keeps uh, telling Oh man, winter they gotta work a little bit longer. But spring is coming. Time is gonna be And when spring comes, the flowers and the bees and the other insects. But one of the insects that is really beautiful is the butterfly. And this time, if butterfly doesn't usually come in the sun, but right now in the spring. It starts out as a calico, a 
deal with them. And we'll squish them and try to get them out the way. But we're looking in the future for those beautiful butterflies. But it starts. Okay. Reverend Hunt, yes, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. It starts with a caterpillar that's on the ground that has to eat the plants and then it wraps itself up for a period and goes away in, in silence, away from everybody. It concludes. And some of our young, older young people may know the word, it goes through a metamorphosis. And then it comes out totally transformed into the beautiful butterfly that we love to see. See, what God does is he takes us, no matter where we are, he takes us in our nothingness. And we start to feed on the word. And then we can cool ourselves in prayer. And God transforms us into that beautiful butterfly. And the butterfly has a specific purpose. It's to move from flower to flower, populating for more growth. So it doesn't matter which stage in life you're at. If you're at the little caterpillar stage, or you're having to be in your metamorphosis stage and you're cocoon, or if you've gotten to the point where you can spread your wings and transform and move the word to somebody else. So this morning, I want you to know that God moves us from the little grubby caliper to the most beautiful butterfly if you allow him to transform. Good morning. Have a good morning. The sermonic hymn today is He is Lord.
by now with Bible study, you know I, this is not my preferred version unless I'm reading Psalms. Um, but this is good for this moment. Already read from the New Revised Standard Version, verses 13 through 23. And we're going to pick up on verse 24. And certain of them which were with them went to the sepulcher and found it even so with the, what the women had said. But him they saw not. And then he said to them, O fools, slow your heart to believe. Let me read that again. O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ have suffered these things and entered into his glory? In the beginning, at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village, whither they went, and he made us, he made as though he would go further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it's towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he, he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And then they said to one another, Did our hearts burn within us, as, we talk, as he talked with us by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up in the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, and saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. And they told him, and they told what things were done on the way, and how he was he had known them in the breaking of the bread. For a moment, for a moment, I would like to go with the uh, just the thought. Leading us where we are. Meeting us where we are. Let me be, be a little bit more specific. Jesus meets us where we are. Where we are. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are and we worship and praise you for all of that you've already done and are going to do. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us on the cross that we may have life and live it abundantly. Lord, as we celebrate this resurrection season and we reclaim our victory, allow us to hear the words and let this meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, I praise you because you are my redeemer. I praise you because you're my strength. I praise you because you're my savior and deliverer. But above all, God, I praise you because you are my victor. And because of you, I am victorious. And I walk in the victory you have for us. This we ask as these words come forth. Amen. Amen. Can you hear me okay? Jesus in a just encounter. The 
The stories are coming from those who knew him well. But they were despondent because what they thought they knew had been shaken and torn at the cross. And so they had been these two disciples had become disillusioned. <coughs> they lacked hope. Because what they thought was going to happen had been shaken or cracking. They thought that he was going to be a physical deliverer from the Roman oppression. And they looked at their religious leaders, just hand the man that they had seen with signs and wonders, had fulfilled all the prophecies, had checked every box. They knew that this was the one. They had followed, they had healed in his name, and had cast out demons in the name of Jesus. They knew that this was the Messiah. And since they knew it was the Messiah, they assumed that the leadership knew it was the, the Messiah. But they were now despondent because they have realized that their church leadership and their beliefs were not coincide. And they were shook up. So as they head home, they could not even take the words that they had heard from the women that said, the angels already told us he's alive and not here. But they could not wrap their head around it because what had happened on Friday. But Jesus shows up. Yeah. And see, Jesus met them where they were. Yeah. And where they were were Bible scholars. Uh -huh. So Jesus starts letting them know of what you know, was going on. He couldn't, it's not, he could see that they were sad. But he needed them to acknowledge their sadness. So as was read earlier, that he asked them, why are you walking around sad? Why are you walking around hopeless? Why if you knew that this was the prophet? If you knew he had done a mighty word in deed, if you knew he was to be crucified because you had studied the scripture, if you knew he had promised to redeem Israel, why are you walking around despondent? But see, Jesus meets us where we are. So first, he recognized what they were going through. He recognized that in order for them to see who he was, he needed to do some common things with them, like just walk and talk with them. Yes. There's so many times in our lives we have a path and pathway in our mind how everything is going to work out. And then when the people hurt your feelings or it doesn't happen the way that you planned and your goal is set, doesn't meet your vision board, you want to go back and just mope about it. But you have to remember, even in the midst of that, Jesus is walking with you. They have lost hope. They have lost joy. They have lost their spiritual sense of direction because they have put and looked and have discarded their faith walk on one vision, even though it wasn't God's vision. Sometimes we have to step back and make sure what we're doing is what God wants us to do. Yes. They can see all of what Scripture said. They can see the signs and wonders. But because of the gruesomeness of the cross, uh -huh. they couldn't see the necessity of it. Uh -huh. So they couldn't understand how was this going, he going to redeem Israel. The prophet spoke about it. 
And not only the prophets, but the law and the Psalms spoke about it. I, I think if our Sunday school uh, studiers will remember last week's question number four. And I had every intention of getting on the Sunday school line to explain question number four. And then I looked at my sermon notes and I said, oh, this explains question number four. I don't have to say that. But what he did, and what we need to do often is get close to the scripture. What Jesus did is he expounded the scriptures with them because that met them where they were. They were biblical scholars. So biblical scholarship is where he met them. But he didn't follow. Uh, go far away with a lot of rhyme and reason. There was no allegories in this time. There was no parables this time. He spoke real plainly to him. He said, don't you remember that in Genesis he said that he is the seed of woman that whose heel was bruised. He's the blessing of Abraham to all nations. He's the high priest under the order of Melchizedek. The man who wrestled with Jacob. He's the lion in the tribe of Judah. The voice from the burning bush. The Passover man. The prophets greater than Moses. The captain of the Lord's army to Joshua. The ultimate kinsman redeemer mentioned to Ruth. The son of David who was the king greater than David. The suffering savior from Psalm 22. The good shepherd in Psalms 23. The wisdom
And it's something happened in their heart that it just starts to burn. When you see the Savior who on the cross body was broken for you and I. When you hear the story, he breaks the bread and he blesses it. And they knew it. And it's strangely warm. It's just like John Wesley said, my heart was strangely warm. I used to think that that was just a sign of what John Wesley said. But that's what the scripture said. Sometimes we gotta get back to where the scripture says. Yeah. It's not just a what we say is what the scripture said. And you yes. will remember what mama said to you. And you would think, oh, mama had just the best word. But when you start reading the scripture for yourself, you realize mama was quoting scripture. And just like our Jesus on the cross, when he said, Father, why have I forsaken you? People thought it was his human side coming out. No, when time got tough, he quoted scripture. God is meeting you where you are. Yes. And today, he's still at the door knocking. Knocking on the door of your heart. And say, so I'm going to meet you right where you are. If that means I have to walk with you and talk with you, if that means when you're driving in your car, I'm going to speak to you when you're here. If that means that while you're on the corner, about to get into something you ain't got no business getting into, I got to talk to you. I'm going to meet you right where you are, no matter what that is. I'll meet you in the DMV. I'll meet you in the grocery store. I'll meet you in the laundry room. I'll meet you in your basement. I'll meet you in your bedroom. I'll meet you at the church. I'll meet you in the school. I will meet you wherever you are. But the point about when Jesus meets you, wherever you were, whatever you were doing, you're going to change. When he met them, the end of that scripture, when he met them, they were at home. They had already got home. They had invited him into the house. And when he broke the bread and blessed it, they got up and walked back to Jerusalem to tell the story. When you allow God in your heart, and you allow God to start transforming you, you are going to have to do an about faith. It doesn't matter how far you travel to get to that one point. When you meet Jesus, you're going to have to turn around and you got to tell the story to help somebody else meet it at their point. What am I saying? God is willing to transform you. He's willing to meet you where you are, but he doesn't want to leave you where you are. Right. So this morning, I want you to remember this. As we go through the stories of resurrection, all of these are victory stories. They had to remember what God had already told them. See, when he came out of the tomb, all power was in his hand. So when we remember, and that takes me back. Some of us have been running the race so long that we have become distracted. With the race, we become distracted of who's on the sidelines or who's not running by me. And we forget that the race is the Lord. Amen. We forget he's our author and our finisher. So if he's the author and the finisher, he said, come as you are, but do not leave the same. We are in the sanctuary listening on our feet. For those worshiping on Facebook with us, if you're able to stand, stand up. God, we just thank you. We thank you for meeting us where we are. We 